How are you? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's recording. Are you, are you all right, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm we, we're I'm having some work done for the house. With the kitchen floor's been redone, so uh, we haven't been able to eat at home for over a week. So it's getting a bit boring having takeaway every night, but there's worse problems to have, to be honest. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate. Uh, I've, I've jotted a few questions down, Rico. I thought we'd, uh, just 20 questions. I thought we'd uh, give it some today, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but first I need to say hello all your hardcore boxing fans. Oh yeah, hello all your hardcore <laughs> boxing fans out there. How are you doing? <laughs> Voice of hardcore boxing. You know, you know. <laughs> right, uh, straight in then, balls deep. What did you think to Shannon Courtney against Rachel Ball and the show as a whole? I guess there's two separate questions there. So Shannon Courtney is obviously somebody that's been hyped up beyond her abilities and has had the backing that most small hall fighters could only dream of. She's got big time sponsors. She's a full time athlete. And we all know why that is. And that has nothing to do with boxing. Uh, she gets more airtime than most world champions. Um, you know, everybody's given everything to her on a plate and then she loses to somebody that's a, a social worker, a part time boxer. And that just shows you sort of the inequality was in boxing where a lot of these kids and a lot of these fighters, whether you're man or woman, get opportunities based on things that have nothing to do with boxing. Um, Shannon Courtney's there mainly for looks, nothing else. So I thought it was good. I thought it was actually good to see that. I have nothing against Shannon personally, but, you know, we, we've just been exposed. Boxing's just been exposed for some of the problems that are there. There are some kids that deserve backing, don't get backing, unless there's guys like Dennis or, you know, guys like Steve Wood or these other guys that end up backing these guys from their own purses rather than Matchroom just deciding to back somebody that has a good social media following and looks decent in a tank top. What yeah. do you think? Uh, I think she looks like Shirley out of EastEnders, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's obviously coming to boxing and it's saved her from personal problems and that, so that's a good thing. Uh, yes. In the ring, that's good. We have to respect her. I thought she got beat. That's my opinion. Some people like, reckon she didn't. I thought she got beat, but I thought we having a referee judge the fight, uh, I thought it left Eddie Earn vulnerable because there's only going to be one scorecard, isn't there? Yeah, true. You know I mean... And I think I mean I, I guess it's tricky with the referee judging the fight because you don't have a British title for female boxers. Otherwise, this would probably be a British title level five. And then you'd have to have three judges. So until you get to the world level in female boxing, you'll always end up having a referee judging it. Problem you've got, Rico, is this, right? They've brought Rachel Ball down, haven't they, from a weight that's higher. And she's in mm. a weight division and there's only one person in the country in that weight and that's Rachel. And then she, she drops down to fight Shannon. There's only one person in Shannon's weight division. So that's the problem. There isn't enough females in them weight divisions. Plus, she didn't do weight, did she? Plus the fighting two-minute rounds, it's, it's baba. Baba, mate. I mean, you see better fights in a town centre on a Saturday night outside Witherspoons in Barnsley, mate. So yeah, I, I mean... It, it was nowhere near the level of fight that uh, Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas was because that was actually a good, entertaining fight. And that's they're one of those fights you really wish in three minutes. They're at a good level, them two, aren't they? They're at a better level. But uh, two seconds. Go on, Rocky. Out. Go on, scoot. I'm doing my head in today. And telling the good body <laughs> goodbye, he has to go down and sit on the settee and watch him walk by the house. He's, he's, the, <laughs> he's like security police. <laughs> Right, uh, so the what... The card is at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what next for <laughs> Shannon and Courtney? Are they going to rematch? Because Eddie loves recycled garbage, doesn't he? Well, yeah, they... as we oh, think this weekend. Rachel Ball move on to other things. Because bearing in mind, Shannon didn't make the weight either, did she? No. So everything was stacked against Rachel Ball and she pulled it off. But once you've got... And it, listen, everybody keeps saying... 
Shannon lost the first round and the eighth. Well, if that's true, right, she's three points down with six rounds to go. Do we agree? Agreed. No referee as a sole judge of the fight, referee stroke judge, Howard Foster, is going to give every single round of them other six to a, a matchroom fighter because he's been accused of being biased that much for matchroom. He were never going to do that, worry. So that was the problem. The knockdown was the problem for Shannon Courtney, even though she threw everything at that girl. At the, she tried her heart out. But after round six, she was blowing out of her ass, wasn't she? Fitness cost her. The weight issue cost her. And going gun ho in round one cost her because she got caught. Inexperience cost her because she's not fought anybody, has she? She's no. got a good record, 5-0. and oh. They threw her in with somebody... Who want that good, but she had a bit more experience. And personally, I think that that's why she come unstuck. She lost round one. She lost round eight. Don't forget the 10 8 round, round one. So, like I've just said, three points down, six rounds to go. How can she say that she won it clearly by two rounds? How? It's only an eight round fight, and there's a knockdown in it. You see, we had this argument with Fury Wilder, didn't we? When he was on his ass twice, yeah. wasn't he? It's a 12 round yeah. fight. But when you're knocked down in an eight round fight, you're never going to get the decision on close because the rounds were close, weren't they, as well, Rico? That's, that's true. And I guess it's always one of these things you can argue to the hilt about scorecards. But it's a good point you make about experience because, from what I see from Shannon Courtney, she doesn't spar many female boxers. So, a lot of the, you see people like Hannah Ranking up in Scotland. She's always flying around the world, sparring other female fighters. And it's one thing sparring against men in a Adam Boots boxing gym, but get actually sparring against the best females. So finding the best females in the world. Boo! He's the best, <laughs> Adam Boo, the Dark Lord. Or is it Darth Vader? Dark, Darth He's the Dark Lord. He's the Dark Lord. Yeah. Go to Adam uh, Boo. Oh, Why well, isn't that the Twitter thing? Somebody loses and they need to go to Adam Booth. It doesn't matter what your style is. <laughs> oh, if you lose your training, go to Dave Caldwell! <laughs> yes. But yeah, Shannon Courtney should be sparring against, if she was a priority of her trainer, uh, which is Charlie, whatever his name is, Adam Booth's assistant coach, she'd be flying around the world sparring against the best female fighters or getting some of the Olympians to come and spar her, but it's not really good preparation sparring against someone like Josh Kelly, is it? No, it isn't, mate, no. It isn't. So, moving on then, how did you have the fight anyway, Rico? I think I had Rachel Ball up by a round or two. I can't really remember. I didn't really score it too accurately. Sometimes I don't bother scoring fights. I just go with the eye test. You argued if Shannon Courtney would have got it, could you really? We would have said well, all match your own bias and all that, but I, I would have said I would have said that because close decisions tend to go to match room fighters, and particularly when there's a knockdown, then you have to really question it. Well, maybe Eddie Hearn uh, maybe felt that he had to throw some back at, at all them people that have been uh, having a go at the match your own bias because it is out of control, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't think it's that calculated. I just think for him, why he said. Why he said that he had Shannon winning it is because it just builds the rematch. But is it really a rematch fight that people are desperate to see? Or does it just mean that people won't be interested in Shannon Courtney? They'd have to rematch it because there isn't anybody else to match him with, is there? They know the routine, but, the game. They're all in-house fighters. He's going to keep it in-house, isn't he? So that's what yeah, I... Yeah, but, but Rachel Paul is an in-house fighter. She's just somebody fucked from somewhere. And that's going to be the biggest person for her career. They might just skirt around me and make her fight against loads of people that we've never heard of and then get her some sort of cheap world title draw. She's signing for Matchroom, isn't she, apparently? Yeah, right. But you know how the signing for Matchroom goes. People don't actually sign for Matchroom. No, they just get, uh, we'll, we'll look after you. It's a bit like uh, yeah. certain people I know. So, yeah, yeah, we'll look after you. Yeah, we've got some at Bublin. Right, number two. Is Ern struggling? But, oh. Sorry, let's just back up a little bit. What did you think to the Zelfa Barrett fight? Uh, I, I, I don't really rate Zelfa Barrett myself. I, I used to think that he might be very good, but again, the opposition, 
wasn't great and he was losing on the scorecards and end up pulling a good punch and you put it on the level and you know, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well he won, didn't he? he so won. he has got a great left hook, hasn't he, on him? He does, but he's a bit of a one trick pony. Um he hasn't really progressed. He hasn't progressed, has he? I mean Frank Warren had him for years and he just hasn't progressed. You know I mean, when, who has he fought? When Frank Warren lets him go right, it usually means that they've come to end and uh, he let Billy Joe go, didn't yeah. he? Zelfa Barrett's yeah. beat nineteen guys with losing records out of twenty four wins. So what was that and that was his best win and he was losing that fight, wasn't he? But he pulled it out, so maybe all them fights that Zelfa's had that were against guys that he, he should he will he should beat easily. Maybe that's Pat Barrett bringing him on. We don't know, do we? He's either padding him out or bringing him on. It, it's hard to be critical and hard to big him up in it on that. I think Jury's out on Zelfa now, do you? Do you think, I think his next fight's important, isn't it? Do you think? Well, you have to match him. See, the thing is, Eddie's invested him, right? So you're not going to match him against somebody that's around the same level. Yeah. You'd rather match him a step up because then he can make, you can cash out on him depending on what happens and turn him into an opponent. Is Eddie Earn struggling to match the big fights because his biggest fight of this month is Dylan White and Dylan White basically he's not won a belt above British level and this is Eddie's big pay-per-view attraction at the moment and it's his first pay-per-view in months, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess you could, you could have had a pay-per-view for five months, right? He weren't allowed to do any boxing or four months or whatever it was. But I, I think it would be unfair to judge Eddie in this period because every promoter is in the same boat. Yeah. But it comes back to the point where Matchroom aren't willing to invest their own money into fights. So everything needs to stack up, right? Because this is a pay-per-view card. If you were investing like Al Heyman has done in the US where they put in half decent fights on for world titles, not talking about the Charlos fighting on that pay-per-view card, then you can put on world title fights and just invest in the sports and your own fighters. But now all the economics need to match up and they're not matching up in fight camps. So I don't think he's even offering to put decent fights on a fight camp. All right, then, mate. All right. Uh, will White be in the same position he is in now in six months? And if so, what excuses will he be coming out with? The point I want to make on this, right, is... Gillian White's been screaming... He's, he's, he's like the girl that cried wolf, isn't he? Right? Yeah. Another six months, we could still see Dillian White saying, oh, Eddie Hearn's still not getting me a title shot because they don't want him to have a title shot, but he doesn't seem to be sinking into Dillian White's thick skull, does it? That he's, he's a spare part and he's got to keep the pay-per-view shows coming. So they're not going to put him in a fight that he could get beaten, are they? They don't want to keep... Because they ain't got no pay-per-view stars, have they? They've got Joshua. Exactly. Take him out of the equation where it's pay-per-view. Where it's, who's next pay-per-view star? Dylan White. It's watered Hopefully, down. Yeah. It's watered down. Rubbish. Eight years ago, we had Frotch Groves, non-pay-per-view. Sorry, Frotch Boutte, non-pay-per-view. Yeah. A 30-0 world champion with 10 defences, 24 by KO, pound for pound, against Frotch, who just come out at Super 6 as a finalist. That were not pay-per-view. Now what we've got, Dylan White against a 41-year-old. And they're both drug cheats. I'm, I, somebody just took a piss up my leg. Hey, Because that's what it seems like to me. Yeah, I mean, we've spoken about this off air, and I, I completely agree. But this isn't a fight that actually leads to anything, and that's my biggest problem. We can't say that the winner of this face is Joshua. They might drag Joshua to this camp, and he'll stand there, but we haven't guaranteed that the winner will face Joshua. And also, it's not quite the fans called, but nobody said that we're desperate to see White against Povetkin because it's no better than White against Parker or Rivas. It's just a fight at the same level. And the problem with the pay-per-view stuff is that fans will moan and say that, oh, it's only 20 quid, don't be stingy. It's just the same as a... Or something. But... It doesn't incentivize fighters to fight world title fights because Dillian White will make the same money on this pay-per-view and maybe another one that he would make 
as the B-side against Joshua Fury. So why would a fighter want to do pay-per-views? Sorry, why would a fighter want to fight for a world title fight if they can have easy, easy matchups and people are willing to pay 20 quid to watch them fight these easy matchups? What's the incentive as a fighter to, have to fight for a world title when you can make big money by not fighting anybody that's a real threat? Good point, Rico. That's why you're my pal. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, so basically, I don't see Dylan White fighting for that belt, WBC yeah. or Joshua. They're just going to keep him parked up until he implodes. Because he's never he going to fight. Where's he going to go? Is he going to go to Frank Warren? He's already knocked him back. He won't go to Al Heyman. He could get parked up over there. He feels safe with Eddie Earn and he's got a steady trickle of money, hasn't he? He's got a guarantee. Exactly. He knows his position. It's like he's accepted that, look, I'm the B-side to Joshua, aren't I? He's got to keep yeah. the show rolling for match room, hasn't he? So all you Dillian White fans will keep bitching about 1,000 days, right? Like Gareth A. Davis, you shit house. Keep going on about 1,000 days, mandatory and all that. Did you see that today on IFL? The, the, the bias yeah. is off the... My next question, isn't it? Bias is off the chart. Right, our journey... But also... But also, <clears throat> the 1,000 days, isn't that your promoter's fault? It's not the governing body's fault. Surely your promoter should be getting... Isn't that what a promoter's job is to lobby the governing bodies to get these things? It's That's not true, the fighter's right. fault or the governing body's fault. Matchroom, right, don't like legal action, right? They're not like Frank Warren. He thrives on it, doesn't he? Old brick top. But yep. Don't like legal action. Dillian White obviously didn't want to pay for legal action. Why didn't they put the WB serve papers on the WBC? Mick Hennessy did when they were messing him about with Carl Zaggy for Froch. Make bump, serve papers on what did they do? Joe Carl Zaggy vacated and Frank Warren. Froch fought Pascal, didn't he? Olympian. Both undefeated. He were number two and number one. That's how he fought for WBC. So why can't Dillian White and Eddie Earn go through that same route? Because they don't want it, do they? They've got a good thing going with Dillian being the B side and having another pay per view star. That's all it's about. Yeah. It's about money. Dillian, here's a check. Here's three and a half million quid. You're going to fight so and so. Well, do I take this three and a half million and I'm guaranteed three and a half million in fights where I've got the edge? Or do I fight Joshua and get another Tonkin for five million? Then I go to back it kill. He's not going to do that, is he? If Joshua nope. took Dylan White last year at Wembley when they should have fought, where would Dylan White be now? He'd be on fucking 400 grand a go, wouldn't he? He'd be getting four, three, 400,000 a fight. Now he can exactly three and a half million ago, and it's a steady ink, steady for him, isn't it? And it keeps that match him happy and him happy. And he thinks in his head, oh, the Joshua fight's always there. If I get beat against Povetkin, I'd probably just have to take a bit of less money. That's how the mindsets work. That's the mentality. Whatever happened to the mentality of, do you know what? I'm going to fight for four belts at Wembley in front of 90,000, like Henry Cooper did. He fought Ali at Wembley, didn't he? Couldn't mm -hmm. do that, could he? He had to go, oh, no, it's about the rematch clause. Beat him, and then you have the, the renegotiate, don't you? That's what Andy Ruiz did, didn't he? Exactly. Uh, part of it is why he's got his guys that he gets on cards, he'll get cuts from those as a manager. There you go. Uh, he's got a very cushy position to be in. And, he can, and it's all just for show that he actually wants the world title fight. I, I imagine... Don't want but nobody... Yeah, he, I don't think he seriously thinks that he'd be the number one in the division. That's why he's quite happy in his position. I've seen emails, right, when I were in Bulgaria from Pulas team, right? I've seen emails and what bids were. And let me tell you this, right? Eddie Yearn didn't go out to bat for Dylan White in them purse bids for Pula. They didn't go out to bat for him. Pulas team won the purse bid. Dylan White's team didn't. So he didn't back him. Dillian White didn't fight Pool. If he pulled out, Yui Fury wept, uh, snuck in, didn't he, and fought him. Obviously, he got cut in the early, early doors, but Yui fought him. And he, he's a fighting man. Yui. Dillian White didn't want to go out there. He's got a cushy number over here on pay-per-view, and we had to earn. That's what, that's what it's about. He didn't, he didn't want a world title. He don't, I don't want to hear all these people like Gareth A. Davis, who's got his tongue. He needs his tongue removing from Dillian White. <laughs> or Tyson Fury. He's one of the biggest rimmers in boxing. 
He fucks <laughs> bigger rimmer than Tony Bellew, Darren Barker. <laughs> Gareth A. <Day laughs> you are the biggest rimmer in boxing. That's what it is. Right, oh. Moving on then, I'm, I'm sick of Dylan White and he's fighting well Saturday. Got another two days yet. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, well, we've just answered this, haven't we? Our journalists and YouTubers asking the right questions to the powers that be. Meaning, they've wow. all had access to Dylan White this week, haven't they? Well, let me tell you this. There's no drug testing, is there, for this fight, is there, between Dylan White and Povetkin? Nope. If there were drug testing and one of them failed, can you imagine what had happened? Right. There's no mm. drug testing. He's not been tested in Portugal. Povetkin's not been tested in Russia, right? So what makes you think they're going to test them now? They didn't know testing, is there? Right. This is what. I and anyways, so the way how the way you are the way how drugs work. The way how drugs work is even if you tested them now, they come back clean. So test them now if you want. It's pointless. But yeah, I, I wonder why. Um, while saying too much, I wonder why um, it was very convenient to fly out to Portugal and train there for four or five months during the lockdown. Yeah, and another I wonder where the VAR is in Portugal. Because he had to get all that weight off, didn't he? Fat as a pig, Michelin man. <laughs> listen, 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 let me tell you this, right? They've all had access to Dylan White this week, haven't they? And Povetkin and their teams. I've not seen one question from the certain YouTubers and certain media people, journalists, boxing journalists. I've not seen one question that says, Dillian, uh, who are you signed up with for drug testing? Is it USADA or VADA for this fight? And if, and if he says, oh, USADA or VADA, you say, well, how many times have you been tested? We've not heard one person mention drug testing. Nobody's mentioned it. So they've all been given the script what to ask, haven't they? Not one person and mentioned it. Not Rob Tebbett, not Coogan, not... Not even that kid who I like. What's he called? Seconds out. Is it Andy Pirill or something? Oh, whatever he's called. Flexen. Danny no, Flexen. I, I don't like him. He's a rimmer. Uh, well, so, some, not, some guy, I forgot his name. Andy Pirill or something. I don't know. Is he a jock or something? I don't know. Either way, I've not heard one person mention drug testing. Not one YouTuber has mentioned it. Not one journalist. None of them. They're all waxing lyrical in articles about this thousand days mentioning no names, and how he's been badly done to, and how he's done it hard way. Yeah, of course he's done it hard way. He's not done any jail time, though, has he? But And how he's been shot and stabbed and all that. Show me bullet. If Dylan White's been shot by a gun, I want to see scars from bullets. Because we're now hearing about that he's been shot and all that. What is he, 50 Cent? Well, uh, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure his brother... I'm sure his brother can testify. His brother? Oh, my. <laughs> God, <laughs> what, what about uh, me getting people, people telling me that uh, his motorhome's bugged? <laughs> Putin's people. people were messaging me on Twitter and asking, has Porky's motor motorhome been raided? I just didn't respond. I was like, come on, like, tell the truth. Has Porky been nabbed? <laughs> oh, that one last week? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for Porky's car body shop been raided. What on earth? What, what planet are people on? Oh, Saturday. People <laughs> are locked up out here. So I'm in bed, mate. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all fake news, isn't it? Well, they didn't allow people to ask. Um, so the YouTubers weren't allowed to ask questions yesterday in the press conference, in the media press conference. So only the national newspapers were allowed to ask questions. Not one of them asked about Mark Tubbs or his training team. Yeah. I mean, how, how on earth do you miss the fact that he's moved trainer? Or how on earth do you not want to hear from the fighter about why have they changed trainer and what will the new trainer bring? You know, just standard questioning. And nobody can even ask that question. It seems like they're not allowed to ask certain questions. I look at it like this, right? Gillian White's gone 11 and 0, five knockouts for Mark Tibbs, right? He's, in, he's the most improved heavyweight in world boxing. We all agree on that, don't we? Even though he's mm -hmm. got a bit of an attitude and he's got a chip on his shoulder. We all agree he's the most improved heavyweight. So, Mark Tibbs, you get a pat on back for that. But they've parted company, and, and, and I'm not going to comment on it because I don't really know what's going on. So, I can't comment on that. But 
Mark Tibbs, while he's been in my company, has always said, wishes him well and that, because they've got a bit of class, haven't they, Tibbs, has not they? Mm-hmm. Um, but they've got this new guy on board now. I don't even know his name. I forgot it. Miller. Or Xavier something. Miller. Oh, yeah, Xavier Miller. Now, they've brought Colwell in now in fight week. You know why? In fight week, they all have squeaky bums. All boxers have squeaky bums. I didn't used to hear out from Carl Frotch for a month, two months. Fight week, texting non-stop. Because the, 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 I'm not saying their arseholes are going, because all boxers are warriors, but... In fight week, they're isolated, aren't they, fighters? And they have a lot of things going through their head, don't they, boxers? Now, I think that Dillian White's a lot's been going through his head, and I think he's wanted, as they say, another set of eyes in the corner. Cole was a good trainer, he's experienced in that, but we all know that he was worming his way around him 18 months ago. And this is just the sad part of the game that people do, Rico, do you know what I mean? It's basically tapping up, befriending yeah. fighters who are trained by other people, hoping that if anything goes wrong and there's a chink in the armour, they can say, I'm always there for you, because they know they're going to get paid well off a pay-per-view fighter, don't they? He's had a pay-per-view fighter in Bellew, and he's doing the same thing with Dylan White. But when you look at Dylan White's career and Bellew's career, they're very, very similar, aren't they, in the fight? Yeah. Dylan's not beat a champion yet, has he, for a belt? Or vacant and both lost, both lost quite early in their career, and so yeah. somehow Bell became pay per view stars. bellu has got four vacant belts at home: British, Commonwealth, European, and World. Dylan's got a vacant British, so they're very similar, but they're very outspoken on social media. So Bellu's had four pay per views. Dylan's going into his fifth, isn't he? But they mm-hmm. haven't achieved much, have they? Not, not, no elite wins, have they? No, nope. no top tier wins. But they know how to play the game. They get it. They also get the fact that we need to pal Eddie Hearn up. Bell, you palled him up. He's my best mate. Dylan has palled him up, but he wants everybody to know that he ain't his best mate. But really, he is. Because if he didn't like Eddie Hearn, hit the train. Consider it severance pay, the money you've got, and jog on, pal, if you're not happy. All that Dean White putting videos out saying, yeah, uh, Eddie Hearn's not delivered for our Dylan. Well, fuck off then. Fuck off. I have people around me, and if you don't like it, I say fuck off. That's what you've got to say. You don't have shit around you, because shit leaves stains. If Eddie earns shit, you get rid of him. But Eddie Earn ain't shit. He's delivered for Dylan White, hasn't he? He's delivered his... I, th- I think oh. he's... I mean... I don't I'm like not... Eddie Earn, mate, but he's delivered for Dylan White. Nobody can say he's not done a good job for him, has he? He's... I agree. Oh, miracles for him, mate. Performed miracles for a guy who did a two-year ban for drug cheating. He performed miracles. They used that other drug test up. We all know that's bollocks. If you piss in a cup, right, in prison, you have an MDT in the morning. They kick your door off and they go, come on, Hartley, MDT. I'm like, oh, God, I had a joint last night. You pee in a cup, right, and they put it into two tubes. That piss there, piss A, you're positive. That piss, if that comes back positive, you're knackered. The, the B sample... That's positive as well, because it's out the same fucking cup, isn't it? So why? Yes. Like, why? Has his B sample come back negative? And why were it no. shrouded in mystery for months? Did, did, he did he come back negative? Did he come back negative, or didn't we hear anything about it? We didn't hear anything about it. It all went missing, but let me tell you this, right? Eddie Yearn has performed miracles. They wheeled him out. They wheeled all the rest of them out. Spencer Fee and lost his job over it, didn't he? Obviously, yep. yeah. And Rivers failed the test as well. He, he he were reading off the narrative, but he went that step further, didn't he? Into company he man. He did he <laughs> Too far. He hung himself. He went into company man mode, but he went <laughs> a little bit further. And he hung himself, and that's what happens. So he's... <laughs> Got everybody's back up, so they've gone. Yeah, get well, uh, drop him. He went into full bean. He went. He, he turned into Mr. Bean, the full bean. He went into full bean and Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he went into full bean and, ne- and Nelson mode. That's what happened. Mate. <laughs> oh. So, but bean. Should have been. Should have been. Never been. Baked bean. Creepy bean. <laughs> So we'll all, I've got plenty of time. Right, uh, right. We're going to fly through these now. I want you to give me a quick answer. We've got fourteen. Yeah, go for it. Where's he heading? Who? 
Where's Kel Brookhead in? Uh, retirement home. I don't think we'll see him fight again. That's my honest guess. Give it 12 months and he'll retire. Yeah, well, I think he's heading for Skid Row. I don't think he'll fight again, right? So that's Kel Brook. And what a waste of talent, Kel Brook. He could have been, oh, he could have been pound for pound, him, mate. One of my favourite British fighters, sort of like, just to watch. I mean, brilliant technician. That win against Porter at the time was a very, very good win for Brett abroad. But, See, yeah, bad like management. A month ago. Fat as a pig, Michelin, man. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, that's a... On, I was going to say, that's the opposite, right? Like, the management of White is here and the management of Brooke is here. So you've got two opposite careers. That's Eddie Hearn's best and Eddie Hearn's worst. Yeah. You've got one being protected, the other one being thrown at Lions. Yeah. Kel Brooke, because they threw him in with Golovkin and Errol Spence, didn't they? And basically it finished him off. Right. We wish Kel Brooke well, but it, it, his days are gone now. For, what's that, 41 fights? Yeah, he's, he's, he's on borrowed time. Billy Joe. Probably one of one of the best natural talented fighters this country's ever produced, Southpaw as well. Doesn't get hit. Do you think he's on slide now? Yeah, I mean his last good performance against Lemieux was three, four years ago. Yeah. Um so this is this is my problem with the whole Billy Joe stuff. He was signed. Matt Room have Andrade, Billy Joe. Uh, they have Callum Smith. They have lots of fighters knocking about that weight division. Yeah. They have Golovkin, Triple G, who's on the zone, who's basically promoted by Eddie. Why aren't these guys fighting against each other? There's no... You can't say to me, oh, because you didn't get the Canelo fight. Uh, that's it. You've got four or five middleweights in your stable or super middleweights. Let them fight against each other. Who are you saving him for? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, agree. So why can't they just put Billy Joe in with John Ryder or Callum? Because exactly, Callum's fighting Yuldrim, so that means that Callum and Ryder and Billy Joe all have to fight, don't they, in the round robin? Surely. Or put Andrade and Billy Joe in together. That's for world title. Isn't that the point to game a world title show? Game Andrade. That's Andrade fought Billy in amateurs. Pardon. As Andrade fought Billy in amateurs. Uh, I know. I'm not sure on that. So, uh, Ailey Marshall, you'll have to... Uh, Harley Marshall, sorry. You'll have to email me and let me know if that's true. Uh, I'm sure Andrade... Or you can ask Terry. I'll ask Terry. I'm sure Andrade's fought Billy in Amazon beating, but don't quote me on it. I don't want to lose my hardcore badge. Right, what next for Callum <laughs> Smith? We've more or less spoke to him. He's in no man's land, isn't he? Eddie hasn't delivered for him, has he? No, I mean, oh, he sent him to a WBS. He's sent him to a World Boxing Super Series to get, get a big paycheck, which was soul and money. Uh, and then nothing's happened since. He fought against John Ryder, which he lost. And now he won't be probably fighting this year. So who knows? He'll end up fighting a mandatory like most others. Waddington. What about him, Josh Waddington? Kanzu. Hmm? I reckon he'll fight against Kanzu, the Chinese guy. Uh, unification China. fight. In China. Yeah, because you can't fight. You won't be able to fight in Ellen Road, so they'll send him to a casino in uh, China. Macau. Martin J. Ward, what are they doing for him? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? He's yeah. been on the matchroom yeah. books for seven, eight years. What's, what have they done for him? He's been fighting against... British level, European level opposition for the last seven, eight years. I, there's only so long I can be interested. Seven years? Probably six. How long has he been on Matchroom's books? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's that long, but... He, Feels like ages. Does it? Have, have a check. Uh, <laughs> All right. Savannah Marsh. I'm like, oh, go on, have a check. Have a check that first week. We, don't, we like to get things right on Porky's Corner, don't we, Rico? Oh, I know, I know. My so hard call badge uh, here it's on the line. Year, isn't it? <laughs> uh, he began his professional career in 2012. 2012? Martin J. Ward, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was one at Team GB. He's one he from the Joshua era. So he fought against Maxi Hughes, 
for the vacant WBC International Super Featherweight title in 2015. Jesus. So he's been there. And he fought, you know, a couple of years ago, he fought against James Tennyson for the vacant WBO International title and European title. And, you know, come on. Yeah. You can't have a guy on the book for eight, eight years and him not do a fight of world title fight. Yeah, Savannah Marshall. Is Eddie delivering for Savannah and Yui? Uh, well, Savannah and Yui are two different questions. I think Savannah, the only way you can deliver for Savannah is to get her to fight against Clarissa Shields in a fight that makes both of them a lot of money. And I think that's only fair. If there was an all-female card, that would be the headline fight. That's the fight I want to see most of all-female boxing. Yeah. Uh, Hugh, um, it's hard to say because Hugh's gone to world level a few times. He's won, he lost one, one fight, he probably won against Parker, but he didn't get the decision. He wasn't, you know, he didn't, he wasn't 100% against Vivetskin and it didn't work out against Pulev. So I think with Hugh now, it's kind of stepping him up slowly. He's still a young heavyweight, so I think it would be unfair to say that he hasn't delivered. But he needs a plan for you. He's not, he's not 26 yet, you He's still 25. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 26 next month, though. Right. Uh, I think Savannah Marshall, there's only one fight for her, and it's Clarissa Shields. Mm -hmm. There's no other fights for her. She could have two fights with Shields, pocket a few quid and get out of the game. Right. Uh, Amir Khan, is he finished? Yeah, I mean, he's doing his charity stuff, isn't he? He's made enough money from boxing. He slurs his speech. I'd, I'd love to see him uh, retire. He's done, he's done a British boxing a great service and he's been a great ambassador. But we can't say I'm been on Skid Row then. We'll call it Millionaire's Row, shall we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Dave Cole, well, we spoke about him. He gets where water gets. Uh, Kid Galahad, where's he heading? Don't sell a ticket. He looks like he's piping up on Twitter, digging Warrington out, blah de blah. He's he's like when he fights, people draw curtains, don't they? But technically, he's one of the best. The, players, isn't it? Yeah, see, I'm a, kid, I'm a kid Galahad fan, but he's not always the most fan friendly to watch. And I think he beat Warrington. I know we disagree uh, yeah. on that one. But I do think. <laughs> I think he deserves another shot against somebody, but I wouldn't want to see necessarily the Warrington fight again. They should put him in with somebody else. I don't know who, but they should stick him in with someone else. Right. Put him in with Shakur Stevenson. Well, five years from now, where, where will Kid Galahad be? Uh, my guess will be... Popping Jim at Ingalls. <laughs> Something like that. Sadly, I really like him, but... Corner man with Dominic <laughs> Ingle on minimum wage. You know, you know what? Somebody like Mick Hennessy should invest in him because Mick Hennessy would get him good opportunities because he's not Eddie's priority. Eddie doesn't care. So if someone like Mick Hennessy gets hold of him, he'll invest in him and map out a career. Yeah, right. Uh, Joshua Boatsy, where's he heading? And Anthony Yard, are they going to fight? Uh, no, they're not. You know what, Joshua Bart? I mean, this. Have you heard him do an interview? Boatsy. Boatsy and Yard. What's happening with them two? They're quiet, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, well, Boatsy's pretty. He's a guy that keeps his profile down, and as does Yard, right? Yard lost uh, his dad and his yeah. grandma during yeah. lockdown, so I don't think he's rushing to come back. Yeah. Um, Boatsy, he's been pro for four years now. And if you think in that same time of the same cohort of amateurs, Shakur Stevenson's won a world title. Uh, I think Lomachenko's the same cohort, isn't it? So you've got a lot of guys from that same cohort that have turned pro and they world level fighters. Boatsy's still at the same level, sort of that British European level, right? So he needs to motor on yard. He's fought against Kovalev, lost valiantly, had his moments in that fight. So for him, against Lyndon Arthur, I think that's a good fight. 
Papuazzi, what do you think? Do you think he's been progressed too slowly? Because four years fighting against guys he should be beating just isn't good enough. He's been fighting men that won't win an egg and spoon race, mate, on sports day at school. That's who he's been fighting. <laughs> I haven't seen him in with anybody yet, mate. That's any good. No. At least Anthony Yard rolled the dice, didn't he? Went and fought the man. And nearly exactly. So I'd, I'd, I'd take Yard to knock him out. Right then, moving on. Dominic Ingalls song, Looking for Fast Car Ready. What do you think to that? I mean, ban it in every country in the world. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Oh, why? But why? <laughs> why would he even do that song? Gets to 52 year old, gets up in the morning and says, today I'm going to write a song about Eddie Hearn and I'm going to get it in a studio and we're going to put it out there and I'm going to do a pub tour singing this song. What sort of man does that at 52 years old? But the question is also the people around him, because he must have played it to somebody before. They could have said, mate, that's brilliant. That's going to top the charts. Yeah, that is, that's an excellent idea. Can you imagine them fighters in that gym when, 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 it, when that song comes on? They all want a sesame, but they know they can't. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Kel Brook? Going in Kid Galahad's flat at night, going, Hey, Barry, did they hear that song from Dom? Great dick, innit? Great dick, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying he did it, Bobby. Fuck fans. What's Eddie think about it? Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie. Right then, moving on. Uh, oh, Dominic Ingalls song, is it rimming, taking rimming to a new level? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, Will, it's, uh, it's bean level. It's bean. It's morphing into a bean. That's what it is. Yeah. Will small hall shows survive? Will small hall promoters be around in the next 12 months? Um, I think the answer is yes, because small hall promoters don't have many costs. So the question isn't small hall promoters' costs are when they put on a show, mainly, right? So if it depends on where the crowds come back, because when the crowds come back, they can just put on a show and then they'll make profit or loss based on how many people come and so forth. But the question is how many small hall boxers will survive? How many small hall fighters are willing to be technically unemployed for 12 months, 18 months? Yeah. All right, then. Well, that's our 45 uh, minutes up. We've got 30 seconds left, Rico. So, listen, it's been a pleasure. As always. Well, I've got Terry coming on next. In a, uh, oh, is he? He told me. He told, I told him that I was coming on, and he said uh, he gonna was going to come on. Well. To get, I'm going to put you both out at the same time, see who does most views. <laughs> yeah, vote for, vote for me. Don't vote for Terry. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> All well, right. Speak to you soon, mate. Take care. All the best to Jess. Take care, mate. Will do. All right. Cheers. Bye.